Hey there, Knicks fans. How you doing? It's your boy, Jonathan Macri, with you for another very special Sunday morning edition of the Knicks Film School Podcast. I like doing these Sunday morning shows because I, I get up, I have my coffee, um, I play with my kid for like three hours, and then I'm fully awake and I'm ready to actually talk about basketball, which is what we're going to do right now. Um, I'm really excited to have the two guests that I have on. Um, I think this might be the first show that I'm, I'm doing two guests at once, so it's either going to go good or horribly wrong. I guess we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me introduce you guys. So uh, you know them from uh, Knicks Fan TV, which you see after every Knicks game. Um, it's really, 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 it's been a long time coming, um, and it's my pleasure to have them on. Uh, CP and Jay Ellis, how are you guys, man? Yeah, we're doing good, man. Uh, yeah. on, on this Sunday morning, doing great, Mac. You have things on your end, man. Um, well, we were talking off air a little bit. I, I've been up since 6.30. That's when my daughter yep. decided to start her Sunday. Um, so I'm okay. I'm, I'm a couple cups of coffee in, and then... I, I told you guys also, I have a first birthday at noon today, and I'm curious where you, before we talk next, I'm curious where you guys stand on this. So this first birthday, I'm, I don't mind going to because it's at a bar. Um, Zach Lowe on his podcast with Ian Begley a few weeks ago was like, if you have a child's birthday party and there's no alcohol there, that's like, that's hostile. That's just mean. <laughs> are, you, are you on board with that or what do you think? You, I, I, if there's no bar, I mean, you either pregame at home or <laughs> you, you, bring, you bring the bar with you, man, you know? You, you bring a little flask in the back pocket and, and you know, once the, the noise level reaches a certain decibel level, you, you, you go out back and you take a swig. Uh, Jay Ellis, what would be, would there be something inappropriate for me to order? At, like, like, literally, I walk in the door, it's noon, I go right to the bar. What, is there an inappropriate drink for me to order or is anything is fair game? Anything's, I mean, first of all, you're talking to somebody who doesn't drink, so no yeah. question for me. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Shirley Temple's for jail. <laughs> Shirley Temple's for jail. Might get aggressive. But, but I, I come from a drinking family, so, like, they don't, I mean, the, th- the thing is with them is, like, whatever gets the party started is what you order. It's like, it, it, there's, there's nothing off limits, really, as long as you don't get too twisted and you can still, you know, manage to coherently looking after a, a child for a bit now you're fine you know? yeah no that that's the other part of it is I, I will have my daughter there so i guess uh yeah some 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 limits on how how, how far we yeah. can go i, I uh, think if, if you're slamming shots that might go <laughs> yeah you know what i mean because you, know, you know their, their interest gets peaked at anything you do you know yeah yeah no i i the guy it's it's my buddy from law school, and uh, we we did many a shot back in the day uh, in our younger degenerate lives. Um, but I, I think those those days have um, have passed, uh, sadly or otherwise. Anyway, let's talk. Actually, no. Before we talk about the Knicks, I want to mm. really quickly because you guys, I feel like have like we you know we do what we do at, at Knicks Film School, but you guys are really you want to talk about putting in the effort. And putting in the work, you guys have been putting in the work now for a while. After it's pretty much after every Nick game, right? You do the post yeah. game, yeah. yeah. Every game uh, after every you know major news event, uh, we do the live streams. Yep. And it's amazing because it's like become consistent. It's good. It's like there are a lot of times where you know I'll be done with like my Periscope and I'll like just kind of watch you guys because I, I just can't get enough of this team. All all fourteen <laughs> wins of them. <laughs> um, when, when, when did you guys get started with this and like, where did the idea come from? So, um, essentially what happened was I was on Instagram. I, I started doing, um, post game recaps in the recorded format on YouTube, um, as early as maybe about two years ago. Um, the recording style of it, it, it was just too time intensive and labor intensive after a game to get out in a timely fashion um, for the next day. So then I started doing more live streams on Instagram. Okay. And then I stumbled upon Jay Ellis's page, who was also doing live streams on Instagram. And then we started doing the split screen. When the split screen technology came yeah. out on Instagram, we started yes. doing <laughs> split screen collabs on Instagram. What season did you start doing that? Last so season. Last yeah. season. Last season. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Last season. So um, as that evolved, I was on um, YouTube and 
I saw the um, the Premier League, the English Premier League, the soccer clubs. They do a really good job of um, fan created media where they're getting fan opinions. They're doing, um, you know, live streams and things of that nature, recorded content. Really, really good. Um, it's by a network called Ball Street Network. And um, so, I, you know, I just approached Jay Ellis. I said, you know, listen, I, I love what you do. I, I think it's um, in line with what I'm doing. And, and I think we share a similar vision. I yeah. said, let's take it to YouTube. You know, let's take it to YouTube and, and get the fans involved. Uh, let's get the phone calls in. Let's get the chats in. And um, it, it's it's really been doing well, man. Really yeah. well. And to add to that, too, like I was kind of like you said, I was on Instagram as well. And um, I have my own, my own show, the Nick of Time show that I was doing every every week and it dropped once a week. And I felt like I really liked I was like the baby. I really liked what he was going. He was bringing to that. And, you know, I really I wanted to put out more content. And I asked my, the people who I was doing the, the show with. Hey, it's like, yo, we really need to get to YouTube. Like, we need to put out more content. We need to get to YouTube. We need to do like a news type of thing where we're staying on top of everything, so we can, sure, yeah. so everything won't be so late. And every time, every time I talked to them about, it, they was like, yo, we just don't have the time. We just don't have the time. And I was like, damn. I was like, all right, cool. We right, me formulate a plan to get to YouTube. And while, and at the meantime, I'm looking at Knicks fan TV on Instagram, and he's growing. And I was like, yo, in my mind, I'm like, yo, I really like, like, what's, what you doing over here? And uh, I think I actually told him that. I think I was on a live stream. And I think he came in one day. And I was like, yo, check out Nick's Fan TV. I really like what he's doing. Da, 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 da. And it, beca- it we just, I don't know. You know, things happen really organically, man. Like, yeah. we did like our own, own split speed thing on Instagram. And the chemistry was pretty much instant. It was kind of weird. It, it's <laughs> actually, it's scary how well. Because you know what I love about it? You guys don't always agree. In fact, I would say there are like, you know, you guys are generally on the same page about stuff, but I mm-hmm. love when you guys see differently about stuff, but at the same time, you're right. The chemistry between you two, it's like it's it's seamless and and you develop that so fast. It's funny what you just said, and I promise we're going to get to the Knicks in a second, but like before the season started, like me and JB were talking about the different ways that we wanted to be out there and Originally, I think we, the plan was maybe for us, for me, not to do the the post game periscopes anymore because I'm like, yeah, we're gonna be doing the um, we're gonna be doing the post game podcasts, which will be out, you know, by the next morning, or and and we'll be doing write ups for games. And then I'm thinking about it, and I, it remind you what you just said reminded me of this. It's like nowadays people want instant reaction right mm-hmm. they don't want to wait to read about it in i mean i was going to say the newspaper the next day but nobody buys newspapers right. anymore but whatever like on on whatever source they get it from and so i think like it you know you're gonna see more and more of these like instant reaction and it just it's curious to me because like i i wonder where it goes from here and i i don't i don't know the answer to that um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not sure. All, all I know is is that um, what we've done, you know, and how we've grown, and not just us, but you know, Nick's Film School as well. I think yeah. there's um, there's a benefit in that there's a global reach to this. Yes, I, I think you know when J. Ellis and I were doing the show um, periodically, we asked people to check in, and I mean, we're, we're touching people in in Ireland, in Afghanistan, Japan, Australia. You know, um, like you said, Mac, a, a 14 win team. Are we at 14? Yeah. If Is we're it 13 even or 14? That, Did I, am I yeah. getting ahead of myself? Right. But, I mean, you know, we're constantly getting people that say, you know, you guys are getting us through the season, the long season. Yeah. You know, you guys help me get through work. You guys yeah. help me get through a tough time. So it's it's really rewarding what, what we're doing. And, and clearly there's a value and a benefit to the fans. That, yeah. That's actually a really good transition because um, I want – like, it's funny. We're so – in the forest we're so in the weeds of like this season we're worrying about fucking um you know dennis smith jr's shooting form and uh (laughs) you know uh how like when frank nilakin is gonna get back and like uh mitchell robinson's ability to box out for defensive rebounds (laughs) whereas for like the rest of the country and i think for actually a lot of knicks fans a lot of casual knicks fans None of this shit matters because of what could potentially take place this summer. Have have either of you guys thought about how much, um, I don't want to say exposure, uh, could increase? Because that's not really what I mean. But, like, 
just generally how much things could change in terms of how much attention is paid to this team based on what might happen in, I guess, well, you can look at it from in two ways. If they get mm-hmm. Zion, if they get the first pick, that that's its own thing. And then obviously mm-hmm. in July. Have Free you guys agency. thought about this yet? Yeah, all yeah. the time. Definitely. <laughs> it, it's like, I, I don't, I, do you think it'll change what we do? It, no, right? It's not going to change what we do at all, right? I, no, it's, it's going to, I think nah. the, the interest is going to peak tremendously. Yeah. Um, and, and people say that all the time. They're like, um, you know, look how many people we get in, in these live streams when the team stinks. When the team when the team went on its 18 game losing streak, we're, we're getting regular, loyal, diehard fans. And yeah. it's just like, you know, imagine when this team, if this team, if, if the dream scenario comes to light and all these things come true. Uh, you know, all the casual fans, the bandwagon fans, and and yeah. even the haters are, are going to uh, are going to come too. So it, it it's going to be an interesting off season, man. Uh, J. Ellis, you, I drink more Kool Aid than anyone, but you drink <laughs> you you drink a fair amount of Kool Aid. Oh yeah, I like Kool Aid. I <laughs> like I like going hard, man. Because this is this is the thing. I'm a fan. I'm yeah, a no. Fan. I'm a real fan. I'm not just a regular guy covering the Knicks. I'm a fan. I'll go off the deep end. I'll wake (laughs) up tomorrow, think about it. It's like, damn, did I really go off too late? And then I'll I'll double back, look at it, and go, nah, I stand by what I said. Or (laughs) (laughs) That's why I love you. So I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to ask you this. Um, Stuff keeps – I don't even want to say coming out about Kevin Durant. It's like – they're just, it's more and more breadcrumbs, whether it's be whether it be a video of him and Kyrie, whether it be his friggin' press conference, you know, after he didn't talk for 10 days, whether it be his moving his business, whether you like you start to hear things online about like, oh, I got I saw a text from this agent. Yeah. All this stuff is out there. JLS, where are you? Where are you at on this? How much are you believing that this is going to take place? Believing my heart's in it, man. I'm not gonna lie. Like before this, this this KP trade happened, people were like, "Durant's coming, Durant's coming." And my mind, I'm like, "Yo, Durant's not coming by himself." Look at the way the team is constructed. Like all these teams, we have all this, we have all this competition here from the Clippers to the Bucks to Brooklyn. Like we we, we can't. I don't think KD's coming, baby. But with the cap space that's cleared, the move that Ninja P, AKA Scott Scott Perry, <laughs> knew, like. <laughs> Like he's trading guys like ninjas in, in, in the dead of the night, clearing cash pay for us, guys. So I'm like, yo, like he. And on top of that, with Fizz being the beacon of hope that we need, you know, kind of just gravitating, pulling all these free agents towards us. I feel like the stars are aligned. We got Alonzo Trier, who who was mentored by KD. We got <laughs> we, we we have the, the DeAndre the, the Jordan, Scott, the, the DeAndre Jordan connection. Friend. Uh, Scott Perry was with him in Seattle. Like it's, it just seems like there's just too many arrows pointing here. And I'm not the guy. I'm not usually when I sip the tea. I sip the tea about when I when I go all the way out. I go all the way about about our players, like how good they can be. Sure. I'm yeah. not really like that with free agents. But this is the first year where I feel like you know what, free agents might actually come. I'm I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it this season. CP, where where are you at? You know what, man? I put so much stock into that summer of LeBron. That I, 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 by the time why you gotta was, do that? I, I, it's, it's not even ten o'clock. And why you gotta talk about two thousand? That was one moment that I remember waking up in the dead of the morning, probably like two, three o'clock in the morning, to check oh, the internet man. to see what the decision was gonna be. After all the hype, yeah. all the prognosticators were leaving. Yeah. Here. He set up the the interview to be in Greenwich, right behind. Yeah, I remember so, that. Right, I yeah. and yeah. wake up and to see Miami Heat. Oh, I wanted to tear my heart out. I don't even think I slept after that, man. To to it, this it, day, the the drunkest I've ever got because I was I was bartending that night of the yeah. decision, and um, but I had like a full staff, and they they didn't really need me behind the bar. I was kind of, I was like managing slash bartending. I blacked out by oh goodness. I blacked out by about ten, eleven o'clock, <laughs> and I, I ended up I ended up somewhere that was not um, my apartment. So yeah, I, I, yeah. I do. Yeah, I, I do remember that. that. Anyway, yeah. yeah. So you know, it, it's it's it was just tough to take, and um, you know, we've been talking about this Kevin Durant thing since the last off season, and yeah. it's 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 just hitting fever pitch after fever pitch during the season. I think 
yes, you hear the scuttlebutt, you hear the rumors, the innuendo. You see, you know, his brother likes a tweet that yeah. mentions him as a Nick. You see Rich Kleiman doing things and, yep. and coming to New York. Office. The office is moving to New York. And, um, you know, similarly to how we saw, you know, LeBron enroll his, his sons into high school. Sure, so you're yeah. thinking, OK, m- maybe the New York thing is um, is a possibility. But then in some interviews, he, he says, um, you know, he never really got that max deal that he that he always deserved. Sure. And sometimes that makes me think he's leaning towards Golden State. And then just recently this week. When he was asked about, you know, how does he, he see his legacy? You know, how, how does he want his legacy to be viewed? And he basically said, you know, his legacy is already cemented. He's, he's not worried about that. So, But he also said it's more about experiences. Right. Yes. He, 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 I, <laughs> can I tell you something? I heard that and I thought the same thing, JL. Yeah. I thought the same thing. And, and then you look at Kyrie Irving, who, I mean, you couldn't be more – uh showy in terms of his distaste and dislike of the celtics it's um <laughs> yeah i mean I, I i i can't put all my eggs in one basket and and believe the hype that they're coming here but i'd be thrilled you know i, I i'd be thrilled if we got them but i also think that you know watching guys like the play of mitchell robinson oh um, watching ISO surge into, as of late. Number one, it takes a sting out of the KP trade. And yeah. I think number two, it just, you know, it, it gives you a more positive spin on what this team can be going forward if we just continue the rebuild. Well, um, so I'm happy you brought up the KP trade because, like, I've, I've argued that – because everybody's view of this, I feel like the national media view is it's a really great trade unless – they don't get um well i mean i guess some people would say unless they don't get anybody this summer i guess there's some people out there who who would argue that if they get durant it makes the trade good even though that i i don't i don't know if there see that's the thing i don't know if there's anybody out there who believes that kd is coming without somebody else right. already agreed to come with him do you, you guys feel the same way i agree yeah yeah so it's like from that perspective but you know my argument is has always been and will always continue to be you could blame the organization and and I will continue to blame the organization. I'm not buying everything that they're trying to sell us about uh Giannis mm-hmm. uh Porzingis. I, I I you have to blame the organization for letting the relationship get to where it is. You have yes, to blame exactly. Yeah, you have to blame the organization for the missteps that they made unquestionably yes. to have him doubt whether or not he could, you know, succeed here. All that being said, I don't think you could blame them for the trade if it got to the point that it did, where he just had no intention of, of wanting to be here. Right. So whether they get the guys this summer or not get the guys this summer, I'm I'm like you. I'm cool with watching like this thing continue to develop slow and, and steady in the right way. What I want to ask you about is Fizz. Because I've been – you want to talk about drinking Kool-Aid. I've been like holding up this guy's banner all year. <laughs> and it, it hasn't been, no from an X's and O's standpoint, because I don't think we've really seen that much as far as X's and O's. No. Nah. Um, I just feel like – so I'm looking at you, – you talk about Kyrie in Boston, right? You talk about guys in other situations. I think Fisdale runs a system of offense, and this is what I want to get your guys' take on, that guys in the league want to come and play in because it's, it's, it's a system of offense that is going to let particular types of players mm. shine in the way that they can show their skills. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, that's – dead on like you can see as soon as Dennis Smith Jr. got here it seems like he kind of had like a resurgence and when he's able to go he's really able to go and that's because he is a a free-flowing type of point guard and you know and in regards to Frank Frank is not that free-flowing court guard he's a system guy (laughs) yeah so you you can see the results may vary depending on the type of point guards you really are and so I, I do feel like a guy like Kyrie will kind of flourish in that style where you know you just Give him the reins and let, and let him fly, and then you know give him some some criticism along the way. <laughs> I I agree with that as well. But do you guys think that maybe once we get some stability with the roster, that he'll look to augment the offense a little bit? <sighs> I, I, don't I don't know anymore. <laughs> I don't yeah, either. I don't know it, anymore. I used, I I, th- I thought that was the the plan. I thought the plan was to implement more of an offense as the season came along, but I don't know if he's 
diverting from the plan because we have like new pieces and new pieces to run the offense, or is that just his plan all along, just to let everybody just kind of roam free? <laughs> it's it's interesting because like you have a league right now where they're like the the best coaches are who like who are the most respected coaches, right? Rick Carlisle, Brad Stevens, obviously Pop. Popovich. Yeah, you, know, mm-hmm. you got to throw Kerr in there, mm-hmm. um, and and Spo, which is where obviously Fizz kind of came off that branch, most of those guys run very more sophisticated offenses Mm -hmm. where it's like, it's not just pick and roll, pick and roll, pick and roll. Right. Um, But I think a lot of players would rather just like, yeah, you know, it's uh, give me the high screen and like, let me either create. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, let me create, let me step back for a three. Let me get rolling downhill. And like, that's the thing that's interesting to me about Durant is I know, like a lot of people say that it's not going to be about basketball. It's going to be about business. And I think it is primarily going to be about business and like life. Like you said before, like he, he wants some, a certain type of life maybe that he sees here in New York, but from a basketball standpoint, maybe just the freedom to be like, you know what? Maybe I could be more like, I'm not saying he's LeBron, but mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. give me the ball. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that could certainly be an appeal. That that could certainly be an appeal, um, but but to your point on on the business standpoint, are you a bit leery that because I see that with LeBron, right? Like I see that yeah. you know, it, it's, my mind. Is winning Oof. gonna be Rear my mind <laughs> in the back seat to you know building the next uh, tech hub in in, in Soho or, or or something like that. It, yeah. You know what is going to be the motivation to come here after? I still believe they're going to win. Uh, the the title so he's gonna have three you know what is gonna be that motivation to still play at the top of your game and try to bring a uh, a championship to New York I I mean he's not gonna put himself out there like look at LeBron this year LeBron's Mm -hmm. not I mean he's obviously not he's in chill mode on defense (laughs) but like I I don't is this LeBron's fault this year I know we're going off track but is I think he's still playing He's still playing hard. He's still putting up numbers. He's still yeah. doing his thing. It's just that it's something hasn't clicked. I, Durant, I feel like is is more seamless in terms of how he fits in. That he's got like his natural talent is still yeah. gonna take. Like I don't know. I'm not. I, I'm not worried about that. Are, are you? You? What do you think, JL? Is you worried about that? A little bit, and only because of what's going on with the Lakers. Well, only only a little bit. But I think um a lot. Well, what's going on with the Lakers has to do with LeBron's body and the wear and tear are actually starting that's, to catch up with him. That's not a bad point. Time. Yeah. For all the time so, he's catching up. Yeah, so, like, because, you know, you see him, I don't know if you, you guys are in, in this world, but, you know, you see him with two chains. Two oh, I saw morning, it. You know, A&R in the A&R project. And the the project, next morning, right. he, he has a maintenance day. You right. start to figure, like, what's, what's going on with this guy? Is he his heart really into it? Like, where, I don't... <laughs> yes. So you hope something like that doesn't happen with KD. But um, <sighs> to be but honest maybe, with you, if yeah. I if I if like he had a rest day, if like hey, look, if the team's winning, I don't really give a shit if he takes five ten days off a year to go do. I don't care if he's clubbing it up until four <laughs> or five in the morning. If that's what's gonna like, cause seriously, what else do we have to? I mean, we're selling him New York. We're selling him yeah. a life that he like. You can't have your cake and eat it too, right? <laughs> Like you, right. you got to give a little bit, don't yeah, you? As long as we're winning, if we're yes, winning, that's the key. we're fine. Because J.R. Smith was here, and <laughs> he was thinking it up. <laughs> he was thinking it up because he was out in the in the clubs, and you know, you if you can't do both, you can't do both. So don't if if you're gonna be out in the clubs, you better be out here and, and perform because we're gonna pull you out on it. It's, in, it's New York. That's, true. that's what it is. So if KD can go to the clubs and win, then a hey, by all means. Passive RCA, whatever you want to do, whatever you drinking, right? Like, like, but you know, we need you to win. Bye, sure. bye. KD seems to me like maybe a Shirley Temple kind of guy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, 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 sit with me, KD. It's all good. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I, we'll see. I don't know. Do you think that there's a handshake deal between him and him and Kyrie to come here? Two. It Max. could be, man. Mm-hmm. It, it it really could be. The deal uh, happened in the hallway, Macri. You didn't see that, that was the deal. <laughs> they signed it in see blood. It? In, in, was, in, at it. the All-Star Weekend, right? Yeah, that was that happened right there, of course, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I pers- personally, I don't think Perry and Mills know anything. I think they've just been given, like, I think word got to them, like, listen, 
it would be wise for you to put yourselves in this position. position. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if I and listen, if that's what they've been told, it would be irresponsible for them not to um, to do that, especially when you know they had a, an injured star who wanted no point wanted out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's talk about something not not so fun. Mm-hmm. Um, Kevin Knox is, Ugh. yeah, um, he's well, okay, he's nineteen. Mm-hmm. He's uh, is I forget is Bonga still in the league because uh, that I always, I always want to say Knox is the youngest player in the league, uh, but then I the, I know Isaac Bonga was like a, a I think he's he's in the Lakers system, right? He's in like so whatever. He's one of the two youngest players in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he has had his struggles. Um, I looked up this statistic before we came on, um, and I'm, we're gonna do a little live a live quiz uh, since the year two thousand. There have been five players um, to have Kevin Knox's combination of effective field goal percentage and field goal attempts per game, meaning he shoots below uh, his effective field goal percentage is below 43%. Mm-hmm. Tim Hardaway Jr. And, his, and wait, hold on, hold on. And his, but this is, this is what's going to throw you field goal attempts above 12 per game. So, Rookies taking a bunch of field goal attempts per game, but shooting really, really poorly. Um, five guys since the, the year 2000. And do you want to take any guesses as to who some of those folks might be? Tim Hardaway. Wait, wait, did he shoot that much? First round he pick? Did, he, he did. Uh, <laughs> rookies. Just rookies. rookies Doesn't have to okay. be first round picks. Tim Hardaway Jr., I honestly don't know what his effective field goal percentage was as a rookie, but I know he did not take 12 field goal attempts per game. Yeah, he didn't shoot that many times. He didn't shoot that much. So, somebody who had the reins. Who, who, somebody had to get a reins off. Dwayne Wade. Um, no, he is not. I'm, I'm now. I'm curious what what Dwayne Wade shot his rookie year. I, I actually, I think he might not have put up that many field goal attempts per game. I'm gonna look it up right now. Keep guessing. Man, I'm um, follow you. Random. No, uh, Ingram. No, that's two, since 2000. Jeez. One of them. Uh, I'll give you a hint. One of them is on the Knicks right now. Dennis Smith Jr. No, um, good guess. The other one. Moutier. Yes, Moutier oh, is one Moutier. of them. Of course, Moutier. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I should note that he was, not only was he below 43% effective field goal percentage, he was .404, so he was way down there. Um, Dwayne Wade's effective field goal percentage was uh, 47%, so he was above above that line. Um, all right, I'm going to tell you the answer, and it's going to blow your mind because there's some some divergent careers here we're talking about. So, in order of most recent to least recent, Emmanuel Moutier, mm. John Wall, mm. oh, John Rus- Wall. Ah. Russell Westbrook, Adam Morrison, and, oh. du- and Dewan Wagner. Oh, man. Wow. Yes. Now, I should also note, um, their ages as rookies, only Emmanuel Moutier and Dewan Wagner were 19 years old. 19. Uh, Wall and Westbrook were 20. And Adam Morrison was 22, so I almost want to put Morrison aside, like out of the category because he was mm-hmm. like older already. Um, but out of those other guys, Dewan Wagner, Russell Westbrook, John Wall, and Emmanuel Moutier, does that make you feel better or worse about the season that Knox is having? Um, not. I mean, the other guys are point guards, and <laughs> that's the thing, right? They're yeah. point guards. Yeah, so no, that's a good that point. That doesn't make me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Trust me, which man Adam Morrison to the list. Yeah, yeah Adam Morrison, Morrison is not good. the point guard. He's out the league, so that doesn't make me feel better. No, it doesn't. Well, maybe, hold on, maybe this will maybe this will make you feel better. So, Dewan Wagner was the 2002-2003 season. The guy before him that did that, Jim Jackson in Dallas, and he was also okay. older. He was 22, okay. but Jim Jackson ended up having a he had a good career. Yeah, he had a okay. decent career. Yeah, I don't know. I'm. All season long, I haven't been worried about Knox. The last week, I'm not worried, but I'm like, I'd like, to, I'd like to see a little bounce back, you know? Yeah, I'm kind of with you, Macri. And I've been giving the, you know, he's young speech for a while. And I think last week or two weeks ago was the first time I had like a crack in the young speech. Because I thought when he came here, I thought he'd be a little bit further along than what he is right now. Than what, he, what he's showing. Where, how, in what way? What did you think he'd be better at? Um, the shooting in general, like yeah. just shooting in general, like 
in December, he seems like things are starting to click for him. His decision making is a lot better. Um, he seemed like he knew when to pass, when to knew when to drive, knew when to shoot. And then you thought it would creep up, like that progression would creep up, and his percentage would kind of creep closer to like forty five, maybe like forty two, forty three. But it's kind of been still a roller coaster, and it's a little. I'm a little worried. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little bit worried. Uh, and then next season, we're gonna have all these a new team and possibly new free agents, and he's not gonna have as many shots to get his, his shot together. So I was really hoping that I would see some more of that towards the end of the season. I'm not seeing it, and it's making me a little bit nervous. CP, where are you at with with Knox? I I think it's it's been a bit of an enigma. Um, you know, yes, he's a rookie and, and yes, you know, rookies go through their ups and downs. They go through their slumps. Um, uh, maybe it's a wall. Maybe it's too many minutes. Um, he's averaging what close to 30. Uh, you know, he yes. is getting a lot of minutes. Um, so you, you know, you can question, does he have his legs? Uh, you know, but listen, I mean, we've seen some good things from Knox. We, we saw that December campaign. He, he, he shot the ball fairly well. Um, I just can't put my hand on it. You know, he's shooting 31% over the last nine games. I, I think he's getting good looks. I think he's getting yeah. good looks as well. They're, they're just – some of them are just way off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some of the shots, he's, he's not even hitting the rim on some of these, men. Maybe it is fatigue, though. Like, maybe it really is fatigue. I still remember, like, the beginning of the season was happening. I think we were all at the – um. Oh, what was, what's the name of that game he went to? With the oh, the, the open practice, yeah. Yeah, the open practice. Mm -hmm. Every shot he took in open practice looked great. Even the ones he missed looked great. And I was like, when I saw that, I was like, oh, this is going to be he's gonna be good. I'm not even worried about him. And over the last week or so, it's feast or famine, as Clyde would say. It's either like online or it's wide left or wide right. Like It yeah. seems very all over the place. I wonder if it's like a... The, like I, I don't know. I feel like it's more it might be mental fatigue for Knox than than I, even legs. I think it's. A, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think it's yeah. a little bit mental, but I also think his legs are, are just gone. Um, you know, it, it's he. I, I kind of this is. I, I didn't expect him to be shooting this badly, but this is kind of the the season I expected from Knox coming in. The one thing that is encouraging to me is despite the fact that he's been so off on his threes. Mm -hmm. He's still shooting 33% from deep on the year, which if you look at like all those other the guys that I mentioned, mm -hmm. um, like John Wall under 30% as a rookie, Russell Westbrook 27% as a rookie, sure. um, you know, DeWine Wagner, we're talking about it, kind of a different era, but he was 31% as a rookie. So I'm not, I don't know, I'm, o I'm okay with it, but I, I want to, it can't get much worse. If it yeah. gets much worse, then I'll, then I'll be worried. Um yeah, but speaking of, of the opposite of, of worse, um, Mitchell Robinson. Hey. I, I'm, I'm just going to open the floor. I, say what you want about Mitchell Robinson. We, like, how wonderful is this? <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say this, man. When we were doing our draft shows um, last offseason, I said, uh, clearly we're going to go for the wing in the first round. I said, yes. in the second round, I said exactly this. I said, we need an athletic big who can man the paint, defend block shots, and jump on the boards. A real athletic big. That was something that we were sorely missing yeah. last year. And for them to go in and get Mitch, I mean, Mitch is – he is exactly what I imagined us getting and, and then some. Shout out to the Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the Lakers. And, the, and the Celtics, by the way, because the Celtics, don't forget, they took Robert Williams. Robert who, Williams. And listen, yep. Robert Williams may still turn out to be a good pro. They – they have a different type of team, so obviously Robert Williams is not getting as many uh, like learn on the fly minutes. But you know they could have taken him there too. Yeah, I, I mean M Mitch is the guy, man. Eleven that points, is... eight rebounds, and three block shots in the month of February. Amazing. Right? He's fifth all time in block percentage. It's Third like, it's in, crazy. in blocks per game. Yeah, I love it, man. I love, like I said, it's taken the sting out of this Porzingis trade and made the second half uh, worthwhile watching for sure. That's a, yeah, no, it's had it like it reminds me a little bit of how because like here, the uh, Christoph Porzingis rookie season, we were still coming off that era where we're like maybe Carmelo Anthony could lead us to the promised land, mm -hmm. and like we were like just getting off the high of that, and we're like, wow, this isn't gonna happen, is it? And then KP came, 
and it's like yeah. oh we got this mm-hmm. i feel like this is like a lesser version of that it's like okay now kp is obviously not gonna happen here but we got mitch you know what i'm saying yeah now we here like i'm really right now i'm just looking for the kp equalizer right now you know like, uh, it's we, it's setting really up what like is. wrestling man it's yeah. setting up for a kp mitch showdown christmas day matinee let's yes. go i'm ready man. oh my god i'm Can ready let's go that so let's we're we're gonna go off the rails here. Kevin Durant comes this summer, right? Um, K, KP is KP's back. He's healthy in Dallas. Your Christmas game, your Christmas game has to be New York Golden State, right? It can't be New York Dallas. Yeah, no, it would have to. Yeah. Be, it would have to be New York Golden State. But oh man, they were, oh. <laughs> New York Dallas. I, I don't unless, know, man. I don't because maybe the finals like rematch Dallas, would, be the Christmas, would be the Christmas game with Golden like State and Dallas, like Philly. I might huh? do New York Dallas, man. I don't know. I think that's if KP is healthy. A New York Dallas ticket that. <laughs> Here. I'll, yeah. I'll say this: uh, whatever that, <laughs> whatever that New York Dallas game is next year, um, regardless of what happens this summer, we're doing a game watch that night. Um, oh yeah, we're there. We're, speaking we're of there. nights that I might black out. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, Mitch is awesome. We're so a lot of there's been a lot of talk since he's been he's been blowing it up um about and this will kind of be a transition to the last thing I really wanted to hit with you guys. Um Anthony Davis um is gonna get traded at some point, um sooner rather than later, unless unless the Pelicans just say, Fuck it, we're gonna keep him in his last year of his contract because they really don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Which I wouldn't put past them, um, but he's going to get traded this summer. Are you? Well, where are you guys at? Um, where are you guys at on a potential AD trade? Do you like? Are you? No, absolutely not. I do not want to mortgage everything to get him. Or are you like? If he tells us under the table, he's going to resign. Is it like only if KD asks for him? Like, where are you at? JL, so you want to take this one? C- I already know where CP is. I've been yeah. on the fence, man. I've been on the fence, I'm not going to lie, because it's AD. He's 25. He's not even in his prime, and he's already a top five player. You, you matching him with a – you have a potential to match him with a Kevin Durant, even if Durant leaves in a few years. Like, you still, you're still good for 10-plus years. And, and and I know it's, it's people are saying, you know, Zion, if you, if you get Zion, then don't, don't do it. But you, you got like the timelines are weird if we get Zion and KD and Kyrie. Like you, you want somebody who's a little further along. So it's, it's very. Uh, I've been I've been back and forth all. That. I, I've changed my mind like three times. But I, I'm the Mitch Mitch being on the rise is making me lean towards a no because I I know they're going to ask for Mitch. Absolutely. There's no way in hell. That's yeah. They're that's not the most, going to ask for Mitch. Yep. No, that's the most. That's why I wanted to ask it because I feel like. Mitch's emergence and and I don't know if it's a good thing like should this be changing our opinion I mean look I love Mitch <laughs> nobody loves Mitch Robinson more than me he's awesome mm-hmm. um but like we're talking about the potential to I mean really it's like if Kevin Durant comes and it's and you get Irving and you get Anthony Davis like it doesn't matter who you give up to get Anthony Davis if you if you add Davis to those two it the Knicks are going. I mean, barring something crazy, the Knicks are going to win a championship. I I, I feel safe like saying that. Like, how, like you're going to win a championship with that team, and we have never seen that in our lifetimes. Yeah. Um. So I, CP, where where are you at? A uh, couple things. Well, first off, this, this Anthony Davis Pelicans thing is it's the most unprecedented situation I've Isn't seen. It, I, I don't think. I don't think I've ever seen a situation where you basically have a player playing for a team and has now openly admitted to coveting other teams in the That's middle crazy. of the season. I mean, you know, now the Pelicans are trying to tank and sit him out and, and rest him. The league is watching them. Like, don't you dare do that. And then he has to show up every night and play and, for a team that he's already bailed on. It's and, crazy. And can I just add something to that before before you keep going? Mm-hmm. Everybody, everybody, when he was at All-Star Weekend and he's like, the list is 29 teams. Like, that was his, that was his decision, PR like yes. uh that he's like him and his team thought that was the best PR approach he could take. It'd be like, oh, That's there's crazy. no list. The list is twenty nine teams. What I was thinking when he said that is like, I wanna play for literally anybody else other yes. than the team. <laughs> it, 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 it's crazy, man. It's crazy. I mean oh, listen, man. players do it all the time, but they do it privately. 
And if you think about it, he's with Rich Paul and these guys. These are the same guys that, yes, when they were younger kids, made the decision with LeBron and that ruined LeBron's uh, leg uh, reputation for a couple years. You know, and now you're seeing it kind of with, with Anthony Davis, man. I see that they, they're trying to be, you know, very uh, cutting edge and revolutionary in, in terms of their approach. But they got to tread lightly, man, because it, it's it's definitely putting a uh, a dark mark on, on his reputation so, right now. So question, though. So question, like, the 29 mm-hmm. teams thing, do you think that's a genuine thing? No, thought, or are you just saying, I'm just shit. saying anything to get the hell out of here? No, I, I think, you, I think yeah. th- that was him and his team were like, we need to dull the – the 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 blow of like people thinking that we're trying to maneuver to like one of these couple of teams and he that was that was what him and his team thought was the best way to go about it i i don't believe him for a second right Mm. so so on on the potential acquisition right so i think um i think it's certainly a possibility that if our dream scenario came true where we got Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, I think this management team would absolutely be on the phone with the Pelicans, um, depending on how the lottery goes and trying to see what the price tag would be for an, for an Anthony Davis. I just would be leery to give up the farm to get him. Because Is I, that I'm, the dream scenario anymore? I'm sorry, go ahead. Is that the dream scenario? What, Katie, Katie and Kyrie? Yes. Is that the dream scenario now? It is for me. I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think, yeah, I, I, if you ask any Nick fan, I, I think it would be. I don't know, man. I feel like there's a little, like, a tide kind of swaying right now where the people are seeing Kyrie being unhappy and being snippy with the media, and they don't want that in New York. And then they're seeing Dennis Smith Jr. here having, like, seeing the potential there and maybe thinking maybe we should get, like, two wings. Or, or hope for it. Even, 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 though they don't, even though it might not be likely. You know I, I, mean? I I would take I would certainly take a Kawhi Katie ticket. Yeah, I, I feel like people leaning more towards that now. I'm mm-hmm. gonna I'm sure. gonna I'm gonna say something I'm gonna say something contrary to that. I don't think it's possible to win at the highest level in the league today if you do not have a primary ball handler who is an absolute knockdown Pitbull. threat from three mm. point range. And that's, I mean, look, I love, I like Dennis Smith. I like what we've seen from him so far. I think he's got a potential to be a really good player in the league. Is he ever going to be the three-point threat that Kyrie Irving is? I, and, uh-huh. and that's to say nothing of what Kyrie does in terms of his shot-making ability around the basket. Um, I just, like, I, I'm high on Dennis Smith Jr., but if you're telling, I think we need that, that, that guy who's going to have the ball in his hands who could hit, who could hit shots. But that's, I, that's I agree. I just don't see how this management team who's been preaching patience and rebuild and all of that could all of a sudden just toss all the flexibility away and try to get Anthony Davis here and and go back to the big three philosophy, which unless you're building it around a LeBron James, it just doesn't lead to overnight success. You still need some sort of depth. Right, like you know, Golden State. Yes, they had their yeah. big three with with Steph, Clay, and Draymond Green. But Andre Iguodala was a glue guy for that team. Um, Mo Spates was a great guy off the bench um, in in terms of, of providing that depth. If you look at the Celtics big three when they had um, KG, Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, they still had guys like Tony Allen. They had PJ Brown. You know, they they had Jason Terry off the bench. They still fortified that bench. So unless these three guys are on the phone with each other, and, and Katie and Kyrie say, you know what? Let's take three quarters of the max, you know, or half of the max. Yeah, that ain't and happening. That's it's not, not going to happen, man. right? It's yeah, not going to happen. But, happen. you know, give credit to, to the Heatles because that's what they did. That's no, what they did. That's- yeah. and But I think, you know, I think, I think for better or worse, I think the entire league follows – LeBron's lead. Yes. And I think once LeBron was like, yes, remember those days where I gave back some money? Yeah, those mm-hmm. days are done. Mm-hmm. I think I think everybody basically is like, all right, um, I'm going to follow suit. Um, they're not going to do it. No, they're not, not going to do it. I, I agree with you in that it, the team would be too uh, – there would be not enough depth uh, for them to win it, win it all like – this year, talk about getting ahead of ourselves to win it all this yeah. like next season, mm-hmm. but like then you operate as an over the cap team from them on, and you get you know different exceptions that come with that and, and all of those things. So I, I don't know the the thing that would not I don't know if scare me is the right word, but just the idea of like watching 
Zion Williamson, um, sp- like, like it, let's say we got the number one pick and then we mm-hmm. traded away, watching him be elsewhere. But you know what? This thing has so many layers to it because, you know, does Zion have enough power? I mean, we, let's let's end with this. Mm-hmm. We're in this age of player empowerment. You just brought up what Anthony Davis did. Are we, are we at the point where a guy like Zion Williamson, let's just say for argument's sake, mm-hmm. the Knicks get the first pick in the draft, the deal is on the table, and they want to make it. Anthony Davis wants to come here. Anthony Davis has given the Knicks some tacket, you know, under the table insurance mm-hmm. that or assurance that okay, if you know you get KD and and, uh, and Kyrie, I will I will re up. Um, with the team and, and we'll, we'll be together for the next whatever it is four or five years mm-hmm. let's say all that's in place and, Zion, and Zion's people are like yeah he's never going to play a day in New Orleans like he yeah. throws a bomb in the whole thing yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> no but I'm, my point is like we've never I mean Steve Francis did it right Steve Francis is like yeah I ain't playing in what was it Memphis I think Man, uh, yeah uh, well then Grant Vancouver yeah, yes <laughs> oh my god Vancouver mm-hmm. I forgot they had a nice team. jerseys nice jerseys nice jerseys nice jerseys yeah. big, shout out to big country Reeves. big country uh, man yeah big country um, are we are we getting close to the point where we might see something like that happen what do you guys think yeah, I don't. I don't think that's that's out of the realm of possibility at all. I mean, if you look at um, like how what would he much... do? What would his threat be? I'm gonna go play in China. I'm gonna go I... to the ACB. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I'm serious. I'm like, I, was he just? Would he just not sign a contract? I, like, I don't. I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm... I don't know if that's his personality. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm that's gauging true. I agree with Dallas on that. I agree I with Dales. I don't know if that's his personality. He seems like this, the happy-go-lucky kid who just got to pick up a basketball. And, yeah. Like, if he didn't have the money, he'd probably like, play in, in, in like, a, a backyard somewhere with a crate. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, no, he, he, does, he does seem highly loyal and, and, um, and committed um, to, to wherever he is. But, I mean, when we see this, you know, convergence of, of sports business and, and, with, and the actual game, and guys really trying to build their brand. I don't think it's it's that far out of the the realm of possibility, man. For, what for was him to... what was Anthony Davis's quote on the LeBron James show? He's like, I'm a I'm my own business or I'm my own corporate, whatever. He he, he said it like a couple of days ago on the show. I got I, I haven't watched it yet. I haven't watched yeah. it. It's I'm something, but it was something today. along the lines of like, I am my own. Like he he just came out and said what basically yeah. has been true for for years. Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. Zion's not going to be the guy, but. It, like my two cents, this is gonna happen in the next like five, five to five, six, seven years. Some kid is gonna come out and basically be like, "I'm not going to play for this team." Like I don't know yeah. what you got to do to make it such that this isn't the case, but um, I don't know. I don't know. I also is that good? I don't know. I, is any of this good? Like I, I like player empowerment, but are we too far? I know Bill Simmons has talked about this a lot lately. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. It, I mean, no, do I think? do like playing problem and go. I, I don't know how far will it, it will go though. I don't know if it'll get that far with with in, within college basketball. I'm not. I don't think so. Like I, don't, I feel like college basketball kind of has their minds on the league or bust. Like I don't know if they. Maybe maybe it's just me, but I don't know if, if you'll see too much of that. Yeah. I, you know, overseas. I feel like overseas guys pull that all the time because they're already there. So yeah. you know, they're already used to being having that weird that that life. To go from America and then going to like overseas is like a different lifestyle. I don't know if it's so yeah. easy for those guys to 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 pull that thread off. But, yeah, I mean, um, I, I'm certainly for the the you know player empowerment, definitely an advocate for that for players having that that power and flexibility. But we've seen so much on the tampering front, you know, from the Lakers, from Magic, yeah. from LeBron, um, teams tampering with players, players tampering with teams. Uh, you got to think the league is going to try to do something to to curtail that. Um, going forward, yeah, the, the the I feel like players trying to be traded earlier in their contract that might be a thing. Like whatever, what the thing that KP pulled off and what Anthony Davis pulled. That's off, what I'm saying. That's the thing that's really. I can see that being more of a thing and being a little bit of a trouble for the league and them trying to get a handle on. But mm-hmm. I, like I'm 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 not sure what can be done. I don't know if you can really control a player's free will. Like I don't no, think you. You, you and can't. that's I, and that's my point is I think the league has put all of these mechanisms in place to try to 
make it so that like the teams have more power and it's just it's just not working at all which is what like to bring it full circle like i'm almost starting to think like maybe maybe the way the knicks are operating like you know putting putting kp's like disenfranchisement with the with the organization aside like it's just like look yeah this is going to be a league where rosters superstars turn over every three four five years Mm -hmm. let's just like all right we're going to take our bite at the apple this year and Mm -hmm. if it doesn't work like we'll wait for the next time and it's like maybe that's you know the idea of trying to be the spurs is like just gone that's (laughs) not gonna happen anymore it's just those like there are no more tim duncans like going through the pipe well well you see that the spurs had to go through it themselves with the Kawhi. (laughs) so no team is uh you know invincible here yeah no it's it's a great point um all right listen guys what's that (laughs) yet (laughs) <laughs> Team LeBron. Stand I said thanks, LeBron. <laughs> is, this is the last question because I just I, I just thought of it. I'm curious where you guys stand because you guys are are you my age? I'm 35. You guys are a little bit younger than me, right? Uh, I'll be 35 this year, so yeah, I'm I'm in the same boat, man. You're in the same boat. Uh, oh yeah, I'm actually older. Are you? You're yeah, I'm actually good, older. Man. Yeah, you're looking 37. very good. Both of you guys are looking good. I look like an old fucking man. <laughs> um, is is LeBron uh, your number one all time? Uh, or at least in comparison to Jordan, where are you guys at? Where am I ranking LeBron? Is he is he above or below Jordan for you? Is it is it a conversation? Well, first of all, I'll say this: I hate I I grew up a, Le- a Jordan and LeBron hater, so this is a very hard question for me to answer. First, I still hold grudges for a really long time, and I know Jordan stopped me from getting ranks. So, but I'll say this: I I will put Jordan again over LeBron because clutch factor to me is immeasurable and he just doesn't whine something about whiners doesn't <laughs> something about whining just rubs me the wrong way it just makes me seem like you're not built, cut from a certain cloth if you're complaining yeah. too much cp where are you at on this yeah i i think um in in terms of ability i think we've never seen a player um like a lebron james in, in terms of that ability although some people would would uh I, I know a lot of my old heads um still mention david thompson as a as an unsung but i still think uh i i still think michael jordan is still the greatest of all time yeah, uh, absolutely you. um clutch factor killer instinct yeah um just every just everything man michael jordan is is the god and um, yeah, and I think he'll continue to be until uh, until we get Frank Nilakina healthy and back on the court. <laughs> <laughs> and, and on that note, I think uh, I think we're done here. Listen, guys, you guys, uh, I, I've been looking forward to this for a while, and I'm I'm so happy we did this. Um, you guys, I just I have to say to anybody out there listening who does not follow you guys on Twitter, who does not watch like the live streams. You're missing out because you got you really, really, really do such a good job. And I just, you know, me and JB talked about it when we were doing the site. It's like there's no reason why fans should not become more of a part of this experience now with the era that we're moving into with social media and everything. And you guys do that. You guys do it better than anyone. And, um, you know, I hope I hope they get Durant um, and everybody this summer because, I, you know, you guys will will blow up that much more, which I think would be awesome. So, um, congrats on your success already, and, and best of luck with everything in the future. Yeah, appreciate it, man. And and um, you know we we've certainly enjoyed collaborating with with Nick's Film School, yourself and JB. So obviously throughout these you know off season um, stages and events, we'll, we're going to have you guys on as well. So the collaboration has been great, and and it's been great working with you guys as well, man. Yeah, man. I was glad to see, it's glad it's great to see everybody kind of just taking off over the, the year or so. We, we've been interacting with each other, man. Great job, you guys, over there at Knicks Film School. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, here's to – are we rooting for a win today? We're, it's the, They're playing the Clippers today for anybody listening, like, on Monday or Tuesday. Are, are we rooting for a win? I'm rooting for a win. Yeah, like I'm rooting. Uh, yeah. Well, so the Suns won last night. They beat the Lakers. Good game, by the way. Entertaining yeah. game. I watched some of that. Yeah, so uh, maybe we got a little bit of wiggle room. All right, I'll, I'll take a, a, a win or a close win. loss with with a Mitch double, triple, triple double with blocks. <laughs> <laughs> triple, triple. Yeah. Uh, he's gonna get a hundred points, hundred rebounds, hundred blocks. All go. right. Um, thank you guys again, and of course everybody out there listening. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the podcast. I don't know what you guys think because I, when I see Zion defensively, it's like Draymond Green on steroids. Yeah, that's what I said. I, I said his you know, defense is, is more to like me than, than his athleticism. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that to me, I'm like, at the very least, he's going to score 15 points by accident. Right. Just from getting to the line and easy okay. dunks. 